Hi. Cell testing and characterization is a very important part of any product development journey. If you are working out with manufacturing a cell or you are developing a new cell or also if you are making a battery pack out of the cells that are sold by any cell manufacturer. The important part of the journey is that let's say you make a cell, you are an electrochemical engineer and you want to know how the cell behaves over a number of cycles or how does the cell behaves with respect to different charge rates, different discharge rates, maybe with respect to temperature or materials which are inside it, the stability of the, the chemical reactions and things like that. So we use the cell testing and characterization devices. If you are a cell manufacturer and you want to know once a cell is manufactured because of your variety of manufacturing activities that are, which are going on, henceforth that there can be a variability in the whole process of manufacturing and various batches of production. So you would use the cell testing and characterization to study if the cells which are produced in a different set of environments or batches will have any formality, can be a one objective case. And also, if the cells that you're trying to produce and give it to a customer will have a stability with respect to number of various parameters such as the charge conditions, discharge conditions, and also a temperature conditions as well. Let's say if you're a battery pack manufacturer or an OEM who would like to choose a cells for making a battery pack, you're gonna have that cells for a various number of battery packs. It's very, very important to know what is the behavioral characteristics of the cell with respect to the age of the cell, how it behaves over the number of cycles. And in that period of it, the cell can be subjected for different uh, charging rates or even different discharging rates, or even at various different environmental conditions in the battery pack is running in the roads. So henceforth, the cell testing is a very, very crucial role for a person to know about when they're trying to work on uh, making a cell or even manufacturing a cell or possibly in manufacturing the battery packs as well. And also the cell testing and characterization gives a very in-depth understanding of the behavior of the cell such that we will be able to use that data as a part of developing a battery management system in such a way that a battery management algorithm development engineer is wise to know how the cell behaves at a various given conditions so that they can better prepare their algorithms to adopt for such kind of a conditions. Henceforth, as I said, these four perspectives of importance of cell testing. The cell testing equipments which are here, uh, to give you an idea, will come with various different number of channels, different number of current ratings as well. Here, we have a cell testing and characterization device, which is 5 volt, 20 amps in range. That means we can test a cell given at a maximum charge or discharge up to 20 amps. So we will not be able to go more than that. With the help of this machine, so we will be able to do that up to 30 amps. It's a 5 volt, 30 amps machine. That means you can subject the cell up to a maximum of 30 amps for a charging or for a discharging condition. In the same way, we also have a 12 amps machine, so where it is 5 volt, 12 amps, so but you can subject the cell maximum up to a rating of 12 amps, either for charging or for discharging in place. So each of these machines will come with the number of channels. So the machines that you see here, you have 8 channels, so sometimes you also can get 16 channels or 36 channels or even more number of channels as well. That means at a time, you can study more number of cells at the same amount of time. That means you can conduct more number of test cases and a very limited test case can be as high as possible. To make sure that we study the behavior of the cells in the charging and discharging with respect to temperature as a, in a variable. So we have these thermal chambers. So with the help of the thermal chamber, we can set the thermal conditions, let's say minus 20 to plus 80 degrees Celsius at any given different temperature ranges. Or even we can cyclically change the temperature or reduce the temperature as well. To do that, we have our thermal chambers. So imagine you can keep a cell inside a thermal chamber and charge it and discharge it at different different temperature conditions. That gives you a behavior of a cell at those different temperature conditions. So that is what the cell testing and characterization machines will enable you to do that. Typically, we perform a test such as an OCV test that is called open circuit voltage test. We can perform charging test, discharging test, and again, the charging test and discharging test are different different charging rates, either higher C rates or a lower C rates or nominal C rates in place. And also we can perform tests such as HPPC, hybrid pulse power characterization test, 
which helps us to study the DC internal resistance characteristics. And also we can perform our tests such as BST, that is dynamic stress test. That means we can continuously vary the, the charging or discharging current. And then we can also study the behavior of a cell. What we study is basically the voltage response of the cell. Either during the charging process, we put a DC current in. During the discharging process, we pull the DC current out. For that, we get to know how the voltage behavior of the cell is going to be. So with the help of this, I'll just give you a quick idea of a cell's uh, characterization. So with the help of these machines, we can acquire data. So we can see here that we are performing different test cases. So with the help of different test cases, we can subject to see how the, the test uh, is being performed, how the graphs are also coming up. Even we can collect this data and we can even save the data as well. So for our any given uh, test scenarios. For example, here we may be performing a typical OCV test or OCV test with uh, intermittent pulses. And like this, when you perform a test, we will be able to get the, uh, the approach to set up the test. And also, once the test is finished, we can acquire the data in the .csv format that can be opened in your Excel sheets. And sometimes even you can keep the test for 100 cycles or 200 cycles. As we keep on performing these test cases, the test will give you a lot of results. And that results will be very much helpful for you in analyzing the behavior of the cell over its SOC ranges, over its the number of cycle ranges. So now once we know such kind of a, a test data, once we have such kind of a test data, we can perform an enormous number of modeling cases. We can, we can study the behavior of the cell. We can also identify whether the specific cell will suit for an application or not, will not suit for an application. Or in a case that whether the cell manufacturer is telling you something in terms of the data sheet, whether the, really the cell will be able to give you that output performance and without you know, having any of the issues as an outcomes from the cell in place. So by that way, the, the cell testing and characterization will help you or enable you in understanding the behavior of the cell over its life cycle. Thank you.